BYD is not just building cars in Europe anymore. They've actually confirmed that they're going to scale up production a lot in Hungary by the end of this year. They'll be producing vehicles and Turkey as well. And they will need European batteries to go in those vehicles because once BYD makes batteries in Europe, tariffs don't really matter at all at that point. Even if a Chinese person owns the company, it's irrelevant. And that's exactly why Volkswagen should be quite nervous. That and uh, their cars are potentially inferior to BYD if their comments are anything to go on. Hello folks, my name is Ben Alexander. Thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate your time. Thank you to these people on the screen now. These are the channel members who give a couple of dollars a month to support my work on the channel. Let's put this into perspective then. So BYD is already building a car plant in a place called Zaged. I've said Zaged for the last year. I don't know if that's how you say it honestly, but I think it's called Zaged, but I can spell it. Here it is on screen. Zaged in Hungary, which is scheduled to start production at the end of this year, this year beginning of next year, 2025, 2026, and then another one in Turkey in 2026. And together, those two plants will basically produce uh, five uh, 500,000 vehicles per year once they're at full capacity, which is about half a million cars, the same as Ford's entire European sales in 2024. Now, here is the problem. Every single BYD battery currently comes out of China and they've got massive gigafactories across uh, places like Shenzhen or uh, Chongqing and other regions pumping out blade batteries in very, very immensely big numbers. But if you're trying to support half a million cars a year in Europe, shipping all of those batteries from China just doesn't make sense really. It's better to just produce them locally and avoid taxes on that. So it's expensive and risky and there's a lot of investment and politically uh, you know, it is a very, it's a terrible idea to to produce them in China and to send them over. So to build them locally is the logical next step. Alfredo Altavilla, I think that's how you say his name. I'll put him on screen for you now. He's a senior advisor to BYD, and he literally said it doesn't make sense to invest in car assembly in Europe, but then bring the batteries from the other side of the world in China. He is right, I think. Batteries aren't just a part of an EV. They're the most expensive component. They're the heaviest component, sometimes costing 40% or more of a car's total cost. And if you're not making batteries locally, you're not really making a car in Europe, are you? Or a European maker. Like if you bought an Apple Mac computer and it was, you know, $4,000 or something, $5,000, touching the microphone, $5,000, and uh, if you bought it, but then all the, all the screen and the innards and all the chipboards came from China, but it was produced in California, you couldn't really say that it's a California-made product because the, 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 ish, the big bit in the middle is not, is not from uh, California. So BYD has basically admitted what was, to all of us, really quite obvious. They need a European battery plant. That's where it's going to get very interesting because if BYD builds both cars and batteries within the bounds of Europe or in Turkey, which is technically uh, not but they've got a an agreement so they don't have to pay tariffs and the labor is like a third of uh, of the labor in, in germany all of the arguments about chinese dumping kind of falls apart really suddenly they're not an importer anymore they're literally uh, a local automaker creating jobs paying taxes but some foreign people own it basically i think that's how this is going to go so yeah they're buying local steel paying local people to make the cars and to turn the lights off at night that sort of stuff so it makes much it makes it much harder for brussels to justify punishing them with tariffs i think so let's look at what it means for volkswagen volkswagen is the biggest car maker in europe but they've been stumbling on evs the id3 was supposed to be kind of the gulf of the electric era for Volkswagen. It's obviously not really taken off that well. Really, really nice to drive. Really, it's all right to look at. Yeah, they've been cutting shifts, not selling them, and the sales lots in uh, in Europe kind of filling up with them a little bit. That There's a notable increase on that. Meanwhile, BYD already has the cheapest and most scalable battery tech in the industry, and their Blade LFP batteries are safe cheap and perfect for mass market cars really and uh, everyone seems to like them we're happy with the design of them and everything and the chemistry and the cooling and the longevity is is, is proven to be brilliant and because BYD makes its own batteries they don't have to rely on suppliers obviously so that is the nature of of true vertical integration Tesla has it BYD has it Volkswagen do not and so this could be the 
the start of the end for Volkswagen really in the next 10, 20 years. So picture this, in three years BYD has a Hungarian built Dolphin and uh, Seagull going head to head with uh, Volkswagen's uh, ID3, but at a lower price, obviously, comparable specs. And when a customer asks, why should I buy the Volkswagen in their own heads? The answer is obviously gonna get harder and harder for Volkswagen to explain. This is why you should buy our car. And the only real card that they've got is where local, but I think, you know, if BYD builds batteries and cars in Hungary, they're, you know, arguably, if you reconcile them, local too, aren't they? Volkswagen are obviously, historically speaking, German, but that seemingly counts for less and less these days for all sorts of reasons which I won't get into. So let's talk about numbers for one second. So in Europe, right now, the ID3 Pro starts at €33,000. The uh, BYD Dolphin Comfort version in Germany, 22,990. I would much rather have the BYD, honestly. That is already a massive gap, you know, a huge gap. So the Dolphin is still imported. Once the BYD starts producing locally, avoiding tariffs and shipping costs, that gap could widen even further. This is a big concern for Volkswagen because they still need to, you know, the, the bosses need to buy yachts and that sort of stuff. And this isn't just about hatchbacks either. So BYD has the Atto 3, the Seal, the Seagull, proven that they can make everything from a 10,000 uh, euro runabout to a 300,000 euro supercar. For example, the Yang Wang U9. Volkswagen's range looks quite narrow by comparison. They've only got a couple of really comparable vehicles and they're slower to adapt as well because they don't control their own supply chain and there's lots of bureaucracy in the middle of all the deals and the, when they trans transform the business into something that's a bit more futuristic. There's also the question of energy costs as well. This is a major point for Europeans. Europe is one of the most expensive regions in the world for industrial electricity, Germany especially. That is why Tesla's Berlin factory have been heavily lobbying for subsidies. BYD will need the same. Hungary is the front runner here for uh, a few reasons, partly because of government incentives and partly because they already host CATL's massive 100 gigawatt hour battery plant. So the ecosystem is already there. And let's not forget Turkey. BYD building in Turkey is genius because Turkey has a customs union with the EU, meaning that cars can be built there in Turkey way, way cheaper. Land is cheaper, you know, and all sorts of things are cheaper there. There are no tariffs, basically. Production costs are lower, it's, it's warmer, there's a lot more sun, they can maybe stick some solar panels on the roof and do what they've done with uh, Zika, with the uh, smart factory. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll do a video on this next. Zika have a really great smart factory, big brain on it, basically, and they know, and they can move around the energy-consuming parts of the process to fit the weather and the clouds coming over the building, stuff like that. And production costs are much lower than in Germany or France, like I've said. That puts even more pressure on Volkswagen and Renault and Stellantis to, to really get good at what they're doing, use business wits, become more efficient. I think it costs something like 35% compared to the German price uh, to produce in Turkey, but I can't remember what exactly it was. I think it was 34% or something like that. So there's also the political angle. Right now, the EU is framing Chinese EVs as a, a sort of threat, as the enemy are sort of getting through the, the net and selling to us. They're also destroying our local business, saying that they're unfairly subsidised, flooding the market and undercutting local automakers. But once BYD has factories in Hungary, Turkey, and potentially a battery gigafactory somewhere in Eastern Europe, the story just changes, it mutates. So my question to you before I just finish the video up is, does that actually start to make it feel like it's a European company? And do you think in five years time, people will start to think of it as a European company? I'm 50-50 on this. Suddenly, it's not China versus Europe, in, in a sense. It's BYD employing so many thousands of Europeans and no polit politician wants to be the one that shuts down jobs in their own backyard. So, like I said before, Chinese business uh, people will get stuff done and they will have a new level of business wit. And I, I just kind of feel like Europeans haven't quite seen that level of business wit uh, within Europe. It's quite rare, really, because Chinese business people are uh, super sharp. So uh, some people might point to Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway selling down its BYD stake as a sign of weakness, 20%. The last 20% sold them all off. But let's be clear, he bought in 
uh, in the mid tens, you know, years ago, he's made at least twenty times return on that investment that he, he put in all those years ago. So of course they were going to take profits. That doesn't mean BYD is in trouble. If anything, it shows how successful the company has been. Berkshire Hathaway left their shares in BYD until the last hour. In my opinion, they could have taken it out two years ago or a year ago, and they would have still made loads of money. So what do you think? I think, honestly, Volkswagen should be pretty worried. BYD has scaled vertical integration uh, and the ability to undercut on price with a more compelling, probably a better looking product, I think. And once they add a European battery plant to the mix, they'll have the one thing that they've been missing, which is uh, local credibility, I would suspect. This isn't about whether I think uh, BYD can sell a few cars in Europe. They're obviously already doing that. They're selling a lot more this year than they did last year. This is about uh, whether BYD can become a mainstream European brand. So think of like the, the Ford Mondeo in 1990 or 1995 or something like that. They want to become that, the mainstream uh, producer of a vehicle, and they want everyone to want their products. And they're kind of that's kind of working, honestly, in, in a lot of places such as Australia. So many people now covet a BYD product. Five years ago, people generally didn't know what it was, but now they, they're kind of keen to go spend tens of thousands on them. So, yeah, if we compare their prices and products to other brands like Ford or Volkswagen, then they have clearly won, if we say it like it really is. Like I always say, a spoon is a spoon. So here's a question I leave you with once BYD builds cars and also the batteries locally in Europe, do you think people will see those vehicles as Chinese imports? Or do you think they will kind of consider them as a local car? Or will they start seeing BYD as just another European automaker, except one that happens to be cheaper and faster, but maybe a little bit owned by some foreign people over there? I don't know. It's a really interesting topic. Uh, thank you for watching. Any thoughts at all, doesn't matter if they're good or bad, put them in the comments. So let me know in the comments what you think below. I'll be checking the comments.